I know I'm not famed for my lover's mornings, but I have to say that this view definitely helps me get up every day. And it looks like the perfect day for a picnic. So I'm seeing this as an opportunity to use my new cookbook, the Constant Spry Cookery Book. This is in the 1950s. I bought it in a little antiques shop recently, and I then found out that it's supposed to be one of the best cookery books of all time. So surely I can find something suitable for a picnic here. And Nick the tree surgeon's outside working on the forest, so I'm going to go and see how he's doing as well. What a sight first thing in the morning. My mother and some dead flowers. <laughs> <laughs> You're just changing them. Yes. yes, it's a beautiful day. I know, I saw that when I opened my shutters this morning. I couldn't believe it's it. It's beautiful and it's going to be a very hot day. And again. we're having a picnic. We might be too hot for a picnic. This side is a good side, mm -hmm. you see. Yes, and I was thinking of maybe making a little something. So I've got my Constant Spry cookery book. This is the woman who jointly with Rosemary Hume, whom she wrote yeah. the book with, invented coronation chicken for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, and she was even more famous, even though this is apparently one of the best cookery books of all times, for flower arranging. She was the first woman who actually used any old containers, like a bicycle basket or yeah. stuff like that, and who added things like artichokes. And she did the flowers for the coronation. Mint ice, which is to be filled into the centre of a grapefruit. It's going to be pure 1950s today, oh, mummy. Grapefruit. <laughs> I've got melons, if that inspires you. Yeah, it may well do, actually. Philip, what a beautiful oh, summer it's sight. Food. It's, it's summer. Who's out? What did she get? <laughs> yeah, well, where are we excited? <laughs> so What's going on? You're going to move the, all the plates. No. And the dishes. They're all in the china pantry. Are they? Plates and dishes, do you want him to move on? I just love the exercise. No wonder my mother is so slim and agile. I'm going to Brico. Who's it? Brico? Yeah. Oh. Is there a dance for Brico? No, no, no Brico dance. For Brico. No. Yeah, I, I nearly took the car. He's just popping into Brico to get... He, he woke up in a DIY mood. It was most unexpected. First thing in the morning, Philip's like, I'm doing the bread oven room. So you're going to get plaster? He's, he's yes. To play, Yes, there's missing plaster in the bread oven room and Philip and Marie have decided that the bread oven room would look very pretty, freshly painted, with the plaster repaired. For her floral studio. For the floral studio. So Philip is on fire. <laughs> it's a bit much for mummy, yeah, all of this. <laughs> Have we got ties? Is the machine working? Yes. There's only one way of finding out, Mummy. Dance your way right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I today. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I wish every day were like this. I've got it. Black currant leaf ice in melon. Mummy did say she wanted me to use melon, and we have black currant leaves in the garden. And why wouldn't you turn that into a weird sorbet to put inside the melon? Why wouldn't you do that? Oh, it's 1950s in the kitchen here today. We have to start by making a sugar syrup with lemon rind. So I'm just preparing the lemon rind now. Whilst that's coming to the boil, I'm going to run out to get the leaves. Philip's gone out. He's gone to get everything that we need to start organising the bread oven room. And yesterday, our paint arrived for Bon Maman's bathroom. So we'll finally be able to finish painting the bathroom this week. We can't do it today because we've still got guests in there. I think our guests are leaving tomorrow, so we'll be able to get started in there tomorrow afternoon. There's my cousin. I've no idea why he is on the dump or where he's off to, but he looks tremendously busy. Hey! He's off to the vegetable garden as well. I don't think I'm going to need his help transporting the black currant leaves, so I'm not convinced we're going to need that many. Come to think of it, I didn't actually look to see how many we did need. Ah, just could take a ton of black currant leaves and hope it's enough. And this is definitely the black currant bush. There they are. I don't know if they're ripe yet. Maybe I should test one. Definitely, definitely not ripe. I don't know how people cook picking things without dresses. I always end up carrying it in my skirts. It's amazing how everything's just burst into life in the garden. To think that we used to have these low beds with just the vegetables in them, no arches. I don't know, it just, it's so different this year from any previous year. It's starting to feel incredibly lush out here. Okay, in they go, they're all washed and ready to use.
it turned out I needed three to four handfuls, so I think I nailed it by sheer chance, actually. I've taken it off the heat and I've got to leave it to infuse for as long as possible. Plus, it needs to cool down before I can make it into sorbet. Whilst that's infusing away, I'm going to get on with the next dish I have chosen in my 1950s picnic, which are oeuf dur soleil d'or. That's golden sunshine hard-boiled eggs. And we have hard-boiled eggs left over from our guest breakfast, so that seemed the perfect way to use them. I'm supposed to use them with the melon pin special sauce, one dessert spoonful of curry powder, a teaspoonful of ginger, a small glass of port and a dessert spoonful of kirsch mixed with cream. That sounds very retro. This is pure retro. Are you in a retro mood today? Absolutely. Good morning. Good. That's what I like to hear. Good morning, Percy. Retro picnic it is. It's not like the usual oeuf mimosa. You actually just kind of break up the yolks with salt and pepper and spoon them over. And now I have made my sauce. It's curry powder, apricot jam, port, kirsch, ginger powder. It was supposed to be with whipped cream. We didn't have any cream in the house, so it's with creme fraiche. And now I have to spoon it over all of that and then serve it ice cold. You brought your own fan! <laughs> no! Oh, so we can sit anywhere! They do things in style, Andrew and Ricardo. In style. Flowers from England, you see. <laughs> Whereas you're a tough southern French woman. Oh, yeah. Pyrenean. Yeah. I mean, I can't guarantee that sorbet is going to be good. And now I do have to follow the instructions properly, because obviously this is the 50s, and they do want it to have green food colouring in it. <laughs> So green food colouring is going in. We don't have it, so I'm doing yellow and blue. But I did like that you could mix two food colourings to make green. That made me quite excited about life. Well, let's see if it works. No. Are we not there yet? No. You little thing. <laughs> let's just stir that up. Philip, how's it taste? That's green. It. Yeah. Bit more yellow. Bit more yellow. <laughs> Let's try a bit of orange, yeah? Yeah. Let's go, go for the one. It's like photoshopping the other way. I declare that green. Oh, that's a very nice green. I hereby declare that. Garden green. Garden green, <laughs> yes. Is it garden green? It's black currant leaf green. It's more like the Wizard of Oz green. I knew you wouldn't approve of the use of food colouring. I knew this. <laughs> this is it. We won't have much. So What's way. this machine? Oh, it's this. This is the ice cream maker. Oh. Andrew, you're I amazing. Think... I've only opened a bag of carrots. Oh, <laughs> I think you've done more than that. I don't oh, think you bought those at the supermarket. So, obviously, no. nothing else can fit. There's more food, but that yeah. thing will fit. So, I think that's. Oh, no, these are yours. This is a little tray for you. I'm going to keep topping you up. Oh, no, darling. I love cucumber sandwiches. Oh, they look so, so good. So, what have we got? We've got smoked salmon. We've got cheese and caramelized onion we've got ham and mustard we've got cheese and tomato and cucumber, cucumber. yes and over here i've made my 1950s pear salad i've stuffed each pear with roquefort mixed with an equal quantity of butter so this is going to be naughty and now i'm mixing cream cheese with a bit of milk to make it runny i'm about to season it and pour it over the top let's just drizzle over the whole lot Oh, that was good. I, I could get quite into the whole 1950s food styling. Oh, I like what you've done with the crisps, Ricardo. Nice. And you and Percy yeah, are matching you. both each other. I know. And the table. Oh, my beige belt. Ladies and gentlemen, we declare this picnic open. Yeah, that's a nice picnic. In here, we have melon. Oh, nice. Watermelon from Andrew. In this one, we have the strange curry sauce to go with the eggs. And there we have the salad. This is a beautiful, beautiful picnic. Okay, I'm really, really happy right now. Now for the weird curry sauce on the eggs. Give that a try. It's lurid green sorbet time, and I'm only going to use one melon. I think it's supposed to be half a melon per person, but we've eaten so much of Andrew's delicious food, I'm fairly certain nobody wants a whole half a melon with violently green sorbet in it. So we'll just do one and we can all have a taste. And I will say of the things that I made, I would make this again and again and again. That pear was incredible. And the eggs were very, very plain. But everyone seems to love the sauce with them. The sort of light port kirsch curry sauce with a bit of ginger it was nice. Um, words fail me, which is quite rare. 
But there we have it, blackcurrant leaf sorbet on melon. Though they did say, as you pointed out, what? What's this? <laughs> I, what? Sorry, what? This is just the shot that you did of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking bikini top, right? Yeah, it's very melodic. <laughs> It's retro. It's retro. That's what we were going for. Yeah, yeah and as I said, the recipe did say blackcurrant leaf ice and yeah, not sorbet. Not sorbet, and so that does look more like ice. And thank you for your genius contribution of suggesting serving it on ice as yeah, well. Yeah, I thought it so was. <laughs> uh -huh. What is Thank this? you for that. I feel very little support in the kitchen right now. Oh, right. Idea. Taking it out. Very elegant. Bon Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> you wouldn't know elegance if it bit you. They are Philistines and they don't know good food when they oh, see no, it. They do. It is arriving. <laughs> oh, yes, it that is. is amazing. Oh, wow. It's definitely it's green. green. It's green. Black currant leaf. Oh, oh my goodness. We have heard of that. Not even pistachio. No, no. Black currant leaf. Mummy, you should like this. We are not wasting any of that black currant plant. Except for the stalks. We've just got to find a black currant oh, stalk recipe next. Oh, very yeah, strange. That's good, actually. Ooh. It's actually surprisingly tasty. It is very tasty. It's like sweets, I mean, like Haribo's. Yes. Melted Haribo's. But I found it a little bit too too syrupy, no, too sweet. But yeah, it's interesting lovely. flavour. Okay. It's actually good. Mm. It's really good, actually. Really good? Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank well, you, like, Constance. Like uh, other than that? No, but I think I like that about the 50s, the really sort of bright use of colour. We're serving it in glasses. No, I think I might do it again, but I would make the syrup less sweet. It's mm. too sweet for me. Too I like sweet. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Philip really likes it too. Some things, yeah. Mm. Or, or as a champagne cocktail. Like mm. if you fill that up with champagne. I like mm. the, the rum idea very much. <laughs> no, this is excellent. I can't believe it. It did not look as though it was going to be good, but it is. Some pretty dramatic laundry usage. Is it laundry? No, where is the music coming from? Pantry usage. This is very dramatic, Maria. This is. <laughs> I'm sorting through. Yeah. Mountains of licorice. Oh, of course, but we need a lot of licorice, don't we? Just in case. Who eats the licorice? There we go. There's your yeah, answer. But every time I give him the licorice, you're not eating it fast enough. Oh my god, I eat so much licorice. Yeah, but I would. I love those. Oh, the they've got little fish. Those are my favourites. That's done. There we go. The sorting of the licorice went very well. Very quickly. Much easier than I thought. Oh, hello. Just the woman we were looking for. We're going to go and see the bread oven room and see what needs to be done because I think Philip started getting supplies. Yeah. Okay, that's not something I've ever seen before. What? What, you and two hammers? Yeah. Are they plastic hammers? No. Because you're making it look like it's really easy to carry two of them at a time. It's because I'm very strong. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. All right, so what is the... Ah, so when you said... It needs a little bit more plastering. So the thing is, Amory just explained it to me, and then I bought two hammers. They didn't have this specific one that Amory asked. These were the closest one. Okay. Neither of us have ever done this before, right? Yeah. What but could possibly go wrong? Hey. You find some. Hey, no, I said what I could possibly go wrong? Nothing. Always wanted to do these kind of things. Like this is the place to do them. Yeah. So Amory specified that we have to take all the remaining plaster off. Because it will have lost its um, elasticity, and we add the new ones. I hate inelastic uh, plaster. Yeah, that's the I worst. The worst. Mm. Just the worst. So everything has to come off. Everything that's still on there, and then we have to replaster. So okay, I'm going to tell you how Philip sold this project <laughs> to me. He was like, "Yeah, we're just going to repaint the bread oven room. There's some little patches which need a bit more plaster, but I can learn how to do that. No problem. Yeah. And then it'll be so much nicer for Marie. It'll be really pretty in there." Well, that's yeah. what I thought. What about the algae? Which algae? What algae? Oh. Mm. I think we knock it off and then we mm -hmm. find some brush to brush it off. It's actually not algae, it's moss. Oh. It's just fully moss. Right. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, we can get rid of that and then yeah. we can just put some... Or is it... I think it might be moss and algae. Lovely. We love a good combination. Yeah. And mould. Actually, that's mould. Yeah, mould. Great. Right. Well, you know... Just, all the key words, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, what it shows us is that several different life forms love this room. <laughs> so it's very popular. That's something to do. Should we open the window? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I actually took away all these cobwebs ten, you know, two weeks ago. Oh my goodness. Wow. 
And it looks as though it's been, yeah, 100 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm also wondering, I, I mean, all joking aside, I think we need to understand why this wall, and it's only that wall, it's not it's the that other one. side one as well, there's a little bit there. It's coming up from the ground, isn't it? So I think there's no foundation. Because there it's fine. Yeah, I think you're right. It's directly onto the ground. Because yeah. this wall's affected, and that's but an internal wall. If Marie will start using it, then opening the window opening the window and also mm. maybe have some heating in here in winter or like in demi-saison yeah it might help with um oh i'm sure heating would heating would kill us well we have to find some masks first because of the you uh, definitely need masks in here the room as well? two yeah. hammers and what what are you actually can this one go to emma's by the way yes good and then are you just going to pickaxe like with this yeah, so basically, well, I'm not sure if we, I should do it without wearing the masks, but, uh, masks, but it's basically doing that and then turning it around and then getting behind it and scraping it on. All right. Um, is this your outfit for it? Probably not. Mm -hmm. No, no, you look very good. I like this outfit with the hat as well. Thank it's you. great. I'd love to stay, but uh, Nick the tree surgeon's oh, here and I've got to go and see stay. him. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a real pity because you know, I could have dealt with that mould for you, no you problem. Shifts, then. It's okay. We'll leave the mould for you. So, like, no, you're now? good. No, I know you want to I get on with it. So I, no. Yeah, it. I am. You. Such a shame. Bye-bye. <laughs> love you. I can't get out of there fast enough. Right, let's go find Nick and chat about the woodland. We heard that. <laughs> Oh, he must be just down here, usually found off in that corner. What have you found? Take a look. Found where she's laying. I knew one of the pea hens had disappeared quite recently, actually. We thought we weren't going to have any pea chicks this year, but Nick's found her nest four eggs. All right, well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. You just took off for a dinner and you made a shot. Yeah, really, you didn't realise she was sitting there. We actually found her on um, Monday when me and Anne Marie was moving all Dan's vehicles and. Oh, we've back. got. I see the tennis court has become Dan's personal vehicle yard. You know, I miss Dan. So being able to look at his cars <laughs> and his little green van, it does warm my heart. And. He's actually wanting to buy the red van too. So that's three of his vehicles. And we've got the cherry picker behind there. Yeah. And the tractor. Look, it's such a good idea to store them all here um, until we actually make yeah. the pool area because then you can properly strim and tidy. Yeah, and it's out of the way. It's yeah. With it's a good surface for them. Excellent. Yeah, you're not going to sink into the grass. It's not filling the grass. No, good idea, Nick. I like it. Um, so what have you been up to for the last couple of days here? Well, basically, I've had Cameron streaming for a couple of three days, taking the grass down everywhere. I saw a lot of streaming as I walked yeah, down. I mean, if we go over there, you'll see. But if we go around all the trees, you can see the young trees that have started to come back on here now. This is going to be the future arboretum along yeah. there. Very, very nice. But these are all wanted to live here, so... Yeah, great. If they're happy there. And then we've been trying to clear some of the wood further down it again while it was raining yesterday and that i've had the firewood processor out yeah it's, just, it's crazy the amount of wood so this is the firewood starting yeah but i just want to show everyone how much wood you have cleared out of the forest just in the last few days because it was all in piles yeah. in the woods so i think we didn't realize quite how much of it there was i mean a lot of it was down all this over here but come down with storm similar time yeah the redwood came down so a lot of it's rotting yeah it's just cutting it to see what's usable firewood or whether you can go straight into the green dishettery.
your ultimate vision for the woods here? What are you aiming towards? As I say with everybody, it's got trees and public. The primary one is safety. Mm. To make it sustainable, we're hopefully going to try and get start getting firewood out by coppicing the chestnuts, the hazels, things like that. And also to make it clearer. Now we're getting the flowers, the wildflowers in, the younger trees. We're starting to get different wildlife coming in, which has got to be better for the other plant life that's around. We've got anglaise. We've also got the um, wall garden just to the side of the woods. So the more insects we get, the more pollinators we get. Hopefully we'll get bees into here. Oh, uh, it's just generally to improve nature. Yeah, we can get chestnut honey. Yeah. We've got a lot of chestnuts. So yeah, if the bees come in, they'll have a whale of a time. My local shop, there's, um, they've got like seven or eight different honeys and I do enjoy the forest one. It's yeah. quite a dark, dark honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very dark brown. But I like beautiful. that too. We've finished our walk and we've come up to see if the pea hen's back on the eggs and she is. So I'll be able to show you all. There is Sif. Hello, Sif. Oh, she's being so good. I don't know how long she's been on them. So I've no idea how long we've got to wait for little pea chicks. She's been there all week. She's really through a Monday. So I think it's probably not been more than two weeks. I told you the Copper Beach would come back to its natural colour again this year. As it was stressed last year, yeah. it grew green. Yeah, because of the drought. It yeah. reverted back to its normal colour. Yeah, you're right, it did. And it's new growth comes back to that. Now everything is looking much healthier this year. Yeah, the rain come at the right time. I'm going to walk back to the chateau through Davy's English garden, which is the perfect bridge between the woods and the chateau because the planting feels very light and informal here, but it's getting increasingly lush every time I walk through, especially the hostas. The hostas just look insanely happy. And these huge leafed plants just love it here. I can't wait until this side is done too. Nick is such an incredible man. We are so lucky to have him here. I love it. Every time he comes here, I see such progress in the woods. I've just run through the kitchen because speaking of progress, I'm wondering what is going on in the bread oven room. Whatever it is, it's garnering quite a lot of interest. The peacock's around seeing what's going on. Hello. I can hear laughter, so clearly going fairly well. Spirits are high. Rhythmic banging. Hello? Hello. Oh wow, Th this is a beautiful sight. Oh, you two were born for this. Thank you. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, it's my time. <laughs> I need to go out and serve wine to the guests. It's a strange and varied life we have here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, going, it's going well. It's going I can well. see that is coming off quite nicely. Here, so now. What? It, it was. Oh, yeah, it you've taken it up a good meter and a bit. Yeah. Oh. Do you think that we're taking on too much? Yeah, yeah I just. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm not saying you have. I was just wondering. I mean, I love the fact that you're like, if we're going to do a job, we're going to do it properly. Oh, no. yeah. I just wanted to like put some plaster there, but Emery explained that because this has lost its elasticity, mm. if we do that, then that's going to crumble. So I'm going to do it again. Well, Amory is the king of doing the job properly the exactly. first time. So we have to take everything off, which is not what I anticipated. Uh, but I'm very willing. I'm really interested in learning it as well. Same, yeah. And I think it's great that we got, you know, Amory to ask for advice yeah. and then we could. Yeah. yeah. We were pretty lucky. Yeah. And also, I think this room just kind of needs it anyway. Yeah. And so. No, I think it's going to be so healthy for it. Mm -hmm. You can breathe properly. Yeah. I'm finding it really therapeutic, actually. It just comes up like. Oh yeah, it comes off nicely. Yeah, that is very pleasing. Green stuff be gone. Yeah, it, oh, this yeah. is the best bit. Oh, yeah. That was very satisfying. Yeah, and it's it's good to see it's not really, like really deep in. Yeah, it's true. just exterior. This is how you're serving the guests. Yes, it's uh, with a hint of plaster. <laughs> uh, a hint. 
<laughs> to add a little, little sprinkle. Okay, go on, give me the glasses, I'll deal with it. See you later. Okay, darling, I'm sure Natty and I can serve the drinks to the guests because you're not going to see them like that. No, I'll quickly um, have a little big rinse <laughs> and then I'll, um, I'll go and lay the table. All right, yeah, because there's no time for the guest dinner. Yes. Okay. Philip, this is stunning. Thank you. I absolutely love it. I like it when you do the paler colours, I think. I think they're my favourites, but then every time I see one of your tables, I'm like, no, this is my favourite. <laughs> I really love this one. I love the glasses, the uh, Velsen on there. Yeah, that's so. it. They make me happy every time. Well, the thing was, like, I was going to go for a very pale blue colour scheme that someone was thinking. Yeah. There's some Marie's flower there. I thought I'd try tie it in with the. Um, yeah, it works so well with the flowers. It just Lambert, so makes that's... me smile and happy. I don't think it would. I think this is much better than it would have been if it just something blue. You enrich every day. You do. I mean, we could just easily sit down with a very plain table, but. We never deal with you. And actually the other day, I want to show everyone that we sat down to have mushy peas and fish and chips in London. And I'm just gonna quickly show everyone what we had the mushy peas in. Okay. Little pork ham made for cream desserts. And we thought, well, we never do that, but no. we do have mushy peas. Exactly, and it, it held a surprising amount of mushy peas. It held all mushy the mushy peas. peas. It was the exact yeah. portion amount. They had the whole like cup full. Yeah. But I love that. I love the fact that you'll just use things and it doesn't have to be in the same way as in the 18th century at all. Just use it That's in a fun way. And it kept it warm whilst we were eating the fish yes, and chips. Yes, surprisingly warm. Yeah. And it had handles, so you didn't bring your hand, we uh, picked it up. And also because it had a lid, you couldn't evaporate. It was so lovely. Dry. Look, it's one of my favourite pieces. The little strawberry. I know on you top. love the strawberry because throughout the entire it's... fish and chip meal, you kept going, but the strawberry. Isn't that the cutest. <laughs> it is the cutest. Okay, I'm going to go and call the guests through. Sure. Well, cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers. cheers all. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for joining us for another day of Leland Life. I would like to say a huge thank you to all of the patrons of the Chateau Diaries. And I'd like to remind you that this week's video is a sneak peek at the two secret projects that we've been working on for Channel 4, which I'll hopefully be able to reveal to all of you in the early autumn. I've also shared a PDF of the chapel report for you with the full structural report of the chapel, as well as the full survey of all of the internal paintwork and everything that needs doing to save it, including all of the pricing. Today, I'd like to say a special thank you to the Dauphins and Dauphines of Lalande, Radhika Madala, Gigi Mo, Marina, Frank Martin, Melissa McCaleb Chapman, and Grant and Erin McLoon. Thank you so much for everything you do for the Chateau de Lalande. Lots and lots of love to all of you, and I can't wait to see you again on Thursday. Bye from Lalande. <laughs>